Hey team, what's up? I thought for this week's devotional, we would talk about uh, worshiping when we don't feel like it. Um, and so I found some thoughts online, a great devotional from Desiring God, an article from Desiring God that uh, I wanted to share some thoughts from with you. And uh, I'm going to put a link to the uh, to the article in the posts on Facebook and YouTube. So, um, so you can go read the whole article if you would like. Um, but I just want to share with you some thoughts um, on what to do when you don't feel like worshiping. Because um, sometimes we don't. You know, sometimes we genuinely just, uh, you know, our hearts maybe aren't in the right place. Like we wonder, you know, emotionally, um, you know, we're not feeling it and we wonder why. Uh, and just sometimes it just happens. And sometimes there are things uh, in the way. Sometimes there's sin in the way that keep us from, from worshiping as we should. And, you know, there, there are all kinds of different um, reasons for it. Um, <clears throat> but I'm just going to talk a little bit about what to do when we don't feel like it. Um, you know, we know that God uh, seeks worshipers who will worship him in spirit and truth. I mean, John, that's John 4, 23 um, that we talk about a lot. The very next verse, you know, Jesus sort of says it again in a different way. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Um, and worshiping in truth, I mean, that seems like kind of an easy thing to understand, that, that we're called to worship God as he is revealed in Scripture, the true God as he is revealed through Scripture in Jesus Christ. So, you know, our worship has to be based on the truth about who God is. Um, so, so what does it mean to worship in spirit? And we talk about this some too, but it's, it's a little bit more, uh, amorphous, a little bit more abstract. Um, so what does that mean? Um, and this article shares a couple of verses, uh, elsewhere in John, um, that may give us some good hints as to what it means. Uh, the first one is John 13, 21, um, you know, which is just a little statement about how Jesus was feeling. And it says, after saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit. Um, so that's a way in which scripture uses the word spirit um, to talk about the way Jesus was feeling. And then John 3, 6 uh, says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Um, using that word spirit to refer to something that's supernaturally produced in us by the Holy Spirit. So if you take those two things... Uh, the author says, and you, and you put them together, you come up with feelings that are um, given to us by the Spirit. So if we worship in spirit, perhaps that means worshiping with spirit-given feelings and emotions. So what if you're not feeling it? What if you walk in on Sunday, whether you're on a stage or in the congregation, and you're just not feeling it? Um, we can look at Psalm 40. I mean, everybody um, probably, you guys are familiar with it. Uh, if you're YouTube fans, you're definitely familiar with it. Um, <clears throat> but I'm going to read you the first few verses of that, of that psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. So in the beginning of this psalm, you know, David's heart is not exactly full of worshipful feelings, right? Um, it's kind of the opposite. Um, so what happened? What took him from the place of feeling like he was trapped in a miry pit um, to a place of praising God? Um, why was he able to do that? Well, in verse 1, he tells us that he waited patiently for the Lord. Um, and so that's the key. That's the key to getting to the right place of worship. Um, let me also say this. You know, emotions are important. Our emotions are important. But we can't let them lead us, right? Right? Our emotions are supposed to follow. So that's important to keep in mind as we talk about this. Um, our emotions are supposed to be a response to something. They're not what we respond to. But David, he didn't, you know, he felt like he was in trouble. He was, he was uh, you know, in a miry pit. He was in a 
bad situation, and he moves from that to a place of worshiping, of praising God by waiting patiently for the Lord. Um, and waiting really means, it doesn't mean just sitting passively um, and waiting, and, you know, and waiting as we might use the word normally for God to do something. What it really means is, is taking the steps that God's promised to use to help us uh, while we trust him to work, however he's going to work. So when David says that he waited patiently for the Lord, he wasn't just probably being passive, but he was expectant and um, looking to God. So here are some suggestions of how we can wait patiently for the Lord when we're not feeling uh, like worshiping him. So just some suggestions that the author of this article offers that I thought were good, so I'm going to share those with you. Um, look to Jesus expectantly. Don't focus on your lifeless heart. Instead, look to Christ with faith, trusting him to meet you, help you, and change you. So just look expectantly to him. Um, you can pray and ask him to help you worship. Be honest with him about how you're feeling, about the, the dullness of your heart. Um, confess any sin that you need to confess. Be assured that forgiveness is based on the finished work of the cross and not on you, right? Not on your uh, self-perceived worth, right? It's based on the cross. Then ask for more of the Spirit's work in your heart to, to help you feel uh, joyful praise, awestruck wonder, uh, heartfelt longing for God, what, whatever God deems you should be feeling in those moments of worship, right? Um, you're not trying to manufacture something here. You're not trying to manufacture something. You're asking the Spirit to give it to you. Um, set your heart on the truth of who God is as revealed in Christ. I mean, that's really important. Just focus prayerfully and relentlessly on the truth in the songs that you're singing and the prayers that you're praying and the scriptures that we're reading. Focus on that truth um, because, our, because our worship has to be centered around that truth. And you just continue those steps patiently. Um, the author says it's called waiting for a reason. Um, God might change your heart instantly or not, uh, but his timing is all about his perfect love for you. So humbly continue waiting for him. And what does God promise to do as we wait for him? Jeremiah 20, 29, 13 says that when we seek him with all our hearts, we'll find him. Hosea 6.3 says, when we press on to know the Lord, he'll come to us like spring rain. John 6.35 says, when we come to Jesus, our heart hungers will be satisfied. Our heart hungers will be satisfied. Uh, in other words, he'll change our hearts so that we experience those spirit-given, heartfelt, worshipful times. He will change our hearts. So... You know, don't worry. Don't feel like you have to go through the motions. Um, just give God what he's due. Focus on the truth and, you know, offer your worship to him regardless of how you feel. And look to him expectantly. Try these things out and see if he doesn't um, change your heart and do something different in you. Well, let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you that it's not reliant on us how we feel and thank you to God that you know it's not necessarily even that there's something wrong with us God it's just maybe our our heart just needs a tune up if we don't feel like worshiping God I pray that you would give us um, these spirit given emotions so we can experience what you have for us to experience we can glorify you as you should be glorified god that's the most important thing just help us to glorify as you sh you as you should be to worship you in spirit and truth thank you lord in jesus name amen all right love you guys see you soon